Hey, it's Dr. Bob Bauer. I've been working with bereaved people for a lot of years and they've given me a lot of suggestions on how to cope with a number of issues relating to grief. One of the ways to think about int intimacy is self-disclosure. And so when you, for those of you who have a partner and you've experienced the death of a, of a loved one, in particular a child, you know, it's important as we all know to communicate, right? But it's not always easy because what happens is that people shut down they or they cry or they run away and so self-disclosure um is part of what intimacy is all about being able to you know put down some of that resistance so i'm going to talk to you about a way um to think about this based on research by a psychologist named dr john gottman g-o-t-t-m-a-n you may want to google his information because he talked about how couples argue looking at the kind of themes that came up that made arguing problematic and what he found was that the more people have criticism in their argument the more they have contempt the more they have uh, defensiveness the more belligerence they have and the more what he called stonewalling they have the more likely people are going to get a divorce because everybody argues and the question becomes how can you argue effectively and so i want to talk about stonewalling because what that means is that the person psychologically leaves during a discussion and you know that because the people are going back and forth and then one says um so what do you think about what i was saying and the person goes oh uh what were you saying they've you know psychologically left that conversation or they get up and physically leave and and say you know i'm out of here and so the question was, well, why do people stonewall? Because not everyone does. And what uh, Gottman did was that he hooked up people physiologically, like to what's called a, you know, a polygraph, um, measuring respiration, galvanic skin response, which is sweat response, um, heart rate, blood pressure, and so on. And what they found was that when people are talking about a difficult issue like the death of a child, and one person gets up and leaves or psychologically leaves stonewalls why and so what they found was that when people talk about difficult things you know to each other um for some people their heart rate goes up you know average heart rate is 70 80 beats a minute some people go up to like 90 beats a minute but some people go up to like 115 beats a minute and what that means is that they're in pain and we need to understand that when people are in pain, they can't think, they can't, you know, do things logically. And for some people, they leave. And so what that means for us coping with grief is that when you have someone that you're in a discussion with and they have to leave phys physically or psychologically, we need to understand that they may be in some degree of pain. For most people, they're not able to say at the moment that it's happening, you know, my heart rate is about 115 beats a minute right now, and that hurts so much I can't stand it. Ideally, what you do, you know, with your partner is that you decide ahead of time what is a signal that indicates, listen, I got to take a break. I can't talk about this now. So let's, you know, let's come back to this at some point later. So, if you have a partner that you are, you know, having some concerns with and, you know, quite often shuts down when they when you want to talk about, you know, the tough issues, it may be that that's what's going on. And it may be important for you to sit down, not at a time when you're in this discussion, but at a time when things are calm and relaxed and check that out and see if they're going to have some uh, in a way of giving you a signal and what i always like to say is giving someone the middle finger is not the kind of signal that i'm talking about okay i hope this helps bye